Jack Mitchell loved photographing artists and became personal friends with many of them in New York. The result is that in the 1960s through the 1990s, he photographed most of the period's prominent New York City artists repeatedly. Today, many of these photographs are in many museum collections. There are 54 Jack Mitchell portraits of artists in the collection of the Smithsonian Archives of American Art. In 2015, the National Portrait Gallery acquired 10 first-time subject inductions of prominent artists, Robert Rushenberg, Ellsworth Kelly, Ray Johnson, Robert Indiana, Eric Fischel, Alex Katz, Dwayne Hansen, Richard Estes, Philip Perlstein, and Ian Hornack. In my years of cataloging and scanning Jack Mitchell's work, I have assembled a lot of interesting groupings of photographs of great artists he photographed, and they tell some fascinating stories. I'll share some of those with you now. Jack first photographed Pulitzer Prize-winning playwright Tennessee Williams in 1966. He remembered it this way. Having seen a peacock chair in Williams' Key West home, I borrowed one from a friend to photograph him in. He remarked, oh my God, all I need now is a drink. So he sat down in the chair and was very, very comfortable. The United States Postal Service selected one of Jack's 1966 portraits to create the 1994 Literary Arts Tennessee Williams commemorative postage stamp. Jack photographed famed Japanese-American artist and designer Isamu Noguchi in his Long Island City studio during March of 1966. Known for his monumental works, the sculptor also created dramatic sets and costumes for the Martha Graham Dance Company's dances based on ancient Greek legends. Jack frequently photographed Martha Graham and her dance company performances. These are sets designed by Isamu Noguchi. This is his setting for Martha Graham's 1962 premiere performance of A Look at Lightning. This is Graham's Phaedra in 1965. Witch of Endor, also 1965. Here are three new ballet settings Noguchi designed for Graham in 1967. And this is Noguchi's setting for A Time of Snow in 1968. In 1968, Jack had a wonderful assignment for multiple publications. They flew him to Venice, Italy for the famous Biennale, the large international art exhibition held every two years, to photograph sculptor Marisol and her art. Marisol Escobar was a Venezuelan-American sculptor born in Paris who lived and worked in New York City, and she was a close friend of Jack Mitchell. Marisol's sculptures represented Venezuela at the 1968 Venice Biennale. Marisol insisted that Jack photograph all of her art for the book Marisol, which was being published by Mobile Oil of Latin America as a special corporate Christmas gift. Here are Jack's photographs of some of Marisol's sculptures of celebrities of the 1960s. Hugh Hefner, John Wayne, the Kennedy family, LBJ with Lady Bird, Linda Bird, and Lucy Bird, the British royal family, and of course the Corgi. And this is Marisol's self-portrait. Jack remembered this as a wonderful assignment, allowing for long, leisurely mornings, boating and sunning with Marisol, and long, art-gossiping lunches at Harry's Bar. The personable and vivacious American sculptor Beverly Pepper joined the party. A great trip indeed. Jack photographed famed sculptor Louise Nevelson in 1973. He remembered that he arrived at her studio, and when she opened the door and saw him with his camera equipment, she exclaimed, Oh my God, I forgot about it! But in minutes, she reappeared in full-length chinchilla coat, cowboy hat, squash blossom, the whole regalia, and Louise loved the pictures. Ten years later, Jack photographed Louise Nevelson again in color. Another wonderful set of portraits. In 1975, Jack photographed conductor Sarah Caldwell and writer and Ms. Magazine publisher Gloria Steinem for the New York Times. He also took solo portraits of Sarah Caldwell, and here is a very interesting example of Jack's old-school retouching skill. 
showing how he removed the bags under her eyes. Here is a similar example of retouching before and after of actress Lauren Bacall to eradicate her crow's feet and soften lines in her brow. This is a 1965 portrait. In those pre-Photoshop days, this work had to be done with magnifying glasses using tiny paintbrushes and great skill at matching gray tones precisely. Painter James Rosenquist was a friend of Jack's and he photographed him frequently over the years. These are for 1969. Here is an experimental series of photographs of Rosenquist releasing balloons against a black backdrop in Jack's studio in 1970. And here is Rosenquist in 1986, working in his home studio in Florida. This is the same studio that was completely destroyed in a fire in 2006. And here is another artist at work. This is singer Bette Midler performing very early in her career on stage during her Continental Baths tour in New York City in 1972. Bette had just released her debut studio album, The Divine Miss M. The album reached the top 10 on Billboard's album chart and was later awarded a platinum disc. The session included some interesting multiple exposures made with a multifaceted prism lens. Here are Jack's 1984 photographs of artist Keith Haring at work creating a huge original graffiti painting of barking dogs on Jack's seamless studio backdrop paper and posing for portraits in front of it. The painting was later used as a backdrop for a dance magazine cover of dancers Bill T. Jones and Artie Zane. Six years later, when Herring died of AIDS at the age of 31, Jack remembered the backdrop and found it carefully rolled up in the back of his studio. He sold it to a New York gallery owner and made a large donation to the Foundation for AIDS Research in his memory. Jack photographed Andy Warhol many times in his Union Square studio in 1968, filming Women in Revolt in 1970, on stage at La Mama Experimental Theater Club with the cast of his play Pork in 1971. A young Harvey Firestein was a member of the cast. Shopping for cosmetics with model and actress Jane Forth. Here you see artist James Rosenquist George Siegel and Andy Warhol holding his dachshund, Archie, with contemporary art collectors Robert and Ethel Skull at the Skull's New York home in November 1973. At the Skull's, Jack also took this famous portrait of Andy holding his beloved Archie, and you see Warhol has relaxed and isn't putting on his famous artist mask. Jack was friends with the entire Warhol crowd. Here is a cocktail party Jack Mitchell threw for Andy Warhol and Paul Morrissey to meet his lifelong friend, Hollywood actress Veronica Lake. Warhol wanted to see if Veronica Lake might do to play the part of the washed-up actress in his next film, Heat, a modern reworking of Sunset Boulevard. That part ultimately went to Sylvia Miles. You can see Warhol let down his guard and really enjoyed himself here. Artist Robert Indiana was a great friend of Jack Mitchell's, and Jack took many photos over several decades of Indiana and his work, including many informal photographs of Robert and other artist friends at parties in his loft. These are from 1967. Indiana's partner was artist William Katz. Here they are with their cat in their Spring Street loft. These color shots are from a 1968 winter afternoon out with Jack. And these are opening night of Robert Indiana's 1968 solo exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art. This is a famous 1969 Jack Mitchell portrait of Robert Indiana peering through the plexiglass box containing his love sculpture based on his very famous love painting. This is artist John Willenbecker with Cats in Indiana. And here is Indiana holding his cat with artist Charles Hinman and Alex Katz outside their Spring Street loft building on a rainy afternoon in 1969. 
Finally, here are some shots of Indiana with a just completed 12 foot tall love sculpture made of Corten steel on display in New York Central Park in 1971. It was purchased in 1975 by the Indianapolis Museum of Art. Artist Philip Perlstein was another great friend of Jack's. These are portraits Jack took in 1971. Here is Perlstein at work in his studio in 1986, and the famous portrait Jack took during that session. In 1989, Perlstein painted a watercolor portrait of Jack Mitchell. It shows a close-up of Jack wearing a Boston Red Sox t-shirt. It hung in Jack Mitchell's home for the next 25 years. Today, it's in the permanent collection of the Orlando Museum of Art. Jack met British pop artist Gerald Lang and photographed him first in 1968. They became lifelong friends. Jack took photos to celebrate Lang's wedding to Galina Golikova in 1969, wearing wonderful 1960s fashions. And he even took some artistic nudes of the young couple. Jack even vacationed at Lang's castle in the Scottish Highlands and took these wonderful color photographs of Gerald and Galena. And Lang and his assistant in his studio and freshly dried yarn for an art project. Even photos of Gerald wearing a kilt and playing the bagpipes, which entertained his cows. You can see why Lang spent the final decades of his life living there. Here are photos of Gerald Lang with his sculpture of Andy Warhol, commissioned posthumously by the Warhol Foundation in 1988. And that is a brief look at some of the interesting photographs of artists by Jack Mitchell.